So the plan elevation of a garden seed is shown below. A 3D graphic is also given. A set of isometric axes is shown, right, your x, y, and your z axis on the right, and the elevation of the object has been positioned relative to the axis as shown. So there's the elevation. Draw the plan in its correct position and complete the axonometric projection. So the plan is going to be underneath here as normal, right? Now for this one, you follow the z axis out, and this line here is parallel with this line, right, or perpendicular to z. This one here will continue this on down horizontally, right, and then the diameter for the semicircle will be perpendicular to the y axis, right? And obviously the y axis is vertical, so the diameter of the semicircle will be horizontal. So, down there, out right there. Now, uh, get your compass then for your semicircle, you bring down. there so this is the radius then from there to there right the radius of this one is when that's brought in from there out to the edge and that line is at level with it there as it shows on the top so you get your semicircle or your compass rather to draw your semicircle now then we have um right that line joins to there and that line joins to there. So our two points here will go back to there. Continue it out past it. Continue it out past it there. Now, the plan of this shape will be what? Or, or this um, siege, what would it be? Simple rectangle, right? No, we'll have to uh, we'll have to put in the the hidden detail too of it, right? Because we'll need that when we project it up. So we're not given any measurements, but obviously for our height here, like if I wanted to calculate the height from the bottom to the top there, I will calculate it from the bottom to the top here, right? If I want to calculate now the width of the object at the top, I can use the plan because this is looking down on it as well. Don't forget. So that's the width of my plan out here. And then the length of it is there to there. Okay, nice sharp point in your compass just to be sure. And you use sliding sets for us. So there's the outline of the plan, the top surface of the seat that you'd actually sit on as a rectangle. Now we said we need to put in the hidden detail there too, okay? So you get your distances there. This is the distance in from the edge for the hidden detail. But you know that I'll go to the far side. So that's there. And this is here. Now the simple reason I went to the far side there is the lead on this or the graphite is a bit short, shorter than the pin, so it's hard to get a small one like that accurately. So you go to the, then the far one on the other side. And do the same thing again. There to there. There to there. And then slide the test curves again for the hidden detail, which of course will be dotted. Now when you're doing the hidden detail, right, make sure that you actually have the outside point because they're the ones that you'll need as we go on to project up. So what I mean by the outside point is don't leave it blank like that, make sure you mark the edge where it actually touches it, because we'll be bringing up them too, for the outside edge here. So, and try and have the dots similar in size for all four. It's not a center line, so it's the same size. Center line obviously is long short, long short. Then what we do is, if we take the top rectangle first, right? This is the top rectangle there, and this is the outside of it here. So if I take the front surface, which would be here and here, I'm going to bring the two of them up and the two of them down. So 
So this is the top surface brought down there. This is the top surface brought down there. Then I'll bring the two of these up for the front of it, so that's up to the front. This is up to the front here, and then um, that's the back there. That's the back there. So then we'll heavy in the top. And I know there's nothing above it because it's the top, so I can heavy it in. Right? Now how far down do they come? Well, this is the distance that it comes down on this side, that's the distance that it comes down there and there. So I can bring this line down and I can actually heavy that in there to there. Right? Directly on, under there and there, because that's that height there. And this height we need to bring it down here, like this. Right? Now I'll put in them little vertical lines. There to there. There to there. There to there. Then I'll bring this one down. Will I do this heavy the whole way across? No, because it's not heavy to cross. It's heavy, then there's a gap for the leg of the stool or the seat, then it's heavy, and then there's the other leg, and then it's heavy. So to get where these two points are on this, I can bring them down here. Right, so, so that's the point where it'll come in heavy too. Then it's a gap of this much. Right, there to there. Then it'll be heavy from there to there. And then it'll be heavy from there to there. So essentially, did I need to do the hidden detail here? When I had them gaps there? Not crucially, but like if you can test it then by bringing these up. And they should meet it with these exact points, of course, and they are. Right? So you can either bring these points up to get these them four points you can bring them up or you can bring them down either or now say i'll heavy in then what i can heavy in on this line which is the first bit then there's the leg of the stool then there's the center bit the leg of the stool and then there's the last bit right now they come down but how do i get how far it comes down on the leg right well again i have that here so this left hand side of the leg comes down from here, there to there, the right hand side comes down to there, so I bring that down, right, and where am I stopping it, I'm stopping at the line coming straight down, because I know that's going to be a vertical line, same with this side, or sorry I'm doing the bottom, so there to there, and there to there, right, and again, we can heavy in the bottom of the legs then like this, there and there to there, and then it can be vertical. There to there. There to there. There to there. There to there. Right? Now, obviously, that gives us the top and the front surface, but it doesn't give us the depth of the two um, legs. Right? Now, the first part, we can say that goes back there. Now, that point, where is that in plan? Right? If you go straight up to the top, it's not the first point in for the top of the hidden detail, it's the second one in. So therefore it's that one. And also we can just simply go straight down and we know that's what it is. So how far does that go back? It goes through the whole lot of it, which is this way. So I go back lightly there. Now is it going to disappear, do you think? Okay, it will. I answer myself. So that's how far it goes back. Look, and when we check it, it does. It disappears in behind it. Now you know that by looking at it anyway, but you should check to be sure. Right? Now the other one of course, that isn't going to disappear. So you could say, there's two ways of doing it now, right? You could get your compass there to get the width, to mark it. Or what's the way you're supposed to use it, do you think? Exactly. That point gives you them two. This point here, which is the second one up from the end, gives you them two. Then that one which is here goes back to this point. So I bring this point up. Right? And then... That's how far that goes back. And where does it go from there then, obviously? Up vertical. Okay, so that's that one done then in axonometric.
Now we have the next one, um, oblique planes. Okay. So the 3D graphic below shows a trophy consisting of a shaped glass pyramid on a marble base. So here's your shaped glass pyramid on the marble base. The projections of the glass portion are shown on the right. So here's the projections of it, an elevation plan and, and an auxiliary view then. Complete the elevation, right? So the first thing we have to do is we don't have the elevation there. Now complete the elevation, of course, isn't just drawing all of them up heavy, right? Because it doesn't go up to that top point because it, it's cut off. There's a, an oblique plane truncating it or cutting it off, right? So you have to say, okay, how will I do this? In plan, the first thing you should do is locate the center point. So join that lightly and join that lightly, right? So now we have it basically completed like as if it was full. But what you need to do is you need to mark the top point. We'll call the top point um, P, right? So that point there, that's P. And there it is, P, and we'll mark it in the auxiliary as well, and that's P, okay? Now, we'll mark the base as one, two, three, four. So we'll say one, two, three, four. Now, you need to correspond them in the elevation. Where are one, two, three, four? What heights will they be? They're all on the ground, right, on the base. So, like, basically, we're saying this is, um, that's one there. You probably won't be able to see it now to mark, will you? No. You say that's one. That's two, three is behind, and four is there, right? And B is where it would be up at the top. Now, this is one, so that point there is one directly above it, on the ground. This is two, because again, this is an elevation, so what's nearest us here in plan, which is this finger, when it's flipped up the elevation, it'll be nearest you. So two is nearest us. Three out of the right hand side edge then, and four, because it's at the back as, it's, as we flip it up, is dotted. Okay? Now, what I have now is, I have a point here, which cuts what line? 1P, 1 to P, right? So therefore, if I project that point straight up, until it cuts 1P, that gives me that point there, which I'm looking for. Then, this point is on 2P, <coughs> excuse me, so again, you need a sharp pencil for this for accuracy. Where that cuts the line 2P, which is there, that's that point. Now they're joined, by the way, them two that I just done, they're joined here, so I'll join them here. Then, we have this point which is on 3P, right, 3 at the bottom going up to P at the top, so I'll bring that point up. That's that. No, I probably have to just extend that right there. So that's that point, right? And again, the line on 2P goes to the line on 3P. So there, this far, this, therefore, 2P there will go to 3P here. And then the last one we're missing is this point here, which is this one here, which is on 4P. So I bring that straight up. And it hits 4p, which is, yeah, and you'd have to just put in a bit of 4p there just so you can see the actual point of contact between them two lines. And it's there. And the line on 3p goes to the point that's on the line 3p, is joined to the point that's on the line 4p. So therefore, that's the same up here. That's the line on 3p, that's at 4p. Right? Now, so this then, this cut surface here, which is here, we now have found there. Now what we have to do obviously is two goes the whole way to that point, doesn't it? So they left it a bit shy on purpose for us. We then have to complete it. So you can just heavy that up there. Be two up. Uh, four is okay, four is on it, and then that's pretty okay too. So that there is the first one done, complete the elevation. Alright? Second one then draw the true shape of the cut surface of the pyramid. Now if you remember junior cert orthographic, you had to get the true shape of surface S, right? And now you could do, there was two ways to do it. There was an orthographic or an auxiliary view. Every time you had surface S as a line in plan. And now a line in plan means it was a vertical surface. So you could project perpendicular to it. Like, like we do here with the orthographic, where we, uh, 
we have an, an elevation plane here. This is surface A here. This is surface A, right? And we'll say, we'll imagine that as one, two, three, four. So this is surface A here. That's one and two. That's three and four. That's, we'll project perpendicular to it, and we take the heights. So two and three are on the ground. So that's two, and that's three. Four is that height up with your compass, so you'd mark it there. That's four. One is that height up, so you'd mark it there. And then we have the true shape of surface A, right? That's one method using an auxiliary view. The other method, which is far more simpler, is rebattement, right? Which is basically where we had a surface S in plan, we'd rotate it till it's a horizontal line. And then when it's a horizontal line in plan, or it's parallel with the XY axis, then we're looking perpendicular to it in elevation. It's the same principle here. What we have now is we have a, we have a surface here with four points, okay? Now we're going to call them, um, I suppose, A, B, C, and D. Now, A, B, C, and D. This one here is A. That one there is B. Um, that one there is C. And then this one here will be D, there at the back, right? Now what we'll do is, from this point of the oblique plane, this line now is an edge view of the oblique plane. So all that surface is on it. We're going to flatten that out or rebat it out till, it's, till we, it hits the ground here, all right? So now, this is probably at 6 degrees, I'd say. Yeah, so, right, so C is up there like that, as we said. D is up there like that, B is there, and A is there, right? Now, so we have A, and B, C, and then D is at the back. So what we do now is we rotate that flat, okay, so that it's lying flat. It's like anything, if you have this isosceles triangle here, this sets up, right, you're looking at it here, you want to see the true shape. Now that's a planned view of it. Obviously the, the visualizer there, camera is directly above it. So that's a planned view. We see there's a line now there, meaning it's a vertical surface. So how you do that is you just rebat it down or, or rotate it down till it's a horizontal surface. And then you see the true shape of it. And that's the same principle that we're doing here. So if you just look. Uh, so first of all, this X1, Y1 is always perpendicular to your um, your horizontal trace, right? So, obviously, I knew that would be 30 because that was 60, right? So, right? Then we rotate them surfaces down, or them points, I should say, apologies. So, A, that's A, B, D, and C. Now, again, what I'm going to do straight away is I'm just going to name them so I don't make a mistake. A, B, and the middle one is D, right, which would be unusual, and C, the last one, right? And a little arrow there to show that they are all rotated down from this point here, because we're getting our oblique plane and we're folded down. Now, if you remember now, this, our oblique plane here is coming up to us at an angle. So the horizontal trace is where it cuts the horizontal plane. So it's like my hand there. So what we're doing now with A, B, C, D, right? It's on my hand here. I'm just going to rotate it down like that. So in other words, we're going to come out perpendicular to the horizontal trace. So D, A, C, and B, right? So come down then parallel. So that's A there. A goes to D and B, so we'll get D and B first. So this is B. This is D. And finally, this is C. Right? So, uh, mark them there. So the first point here is A. B. D. And C at the top. And then you can join them. Right, and then I'll just write 
true shape here. And that's a process, a process called revetment, right? Where you're just rotating it flat. So the arrows here show that that's rotated. So you little arrows here just to show you that that's projected down. And then this one here is projected across perpendicular. So I'll just do, right? I'll just show that that's perpendicular there. That's perpendicular there, right? So that's axonometric oblique planes. The last one we'll do now before the is uh, envelopments. Um, which is basically, instead of opening something out like develop developments, you're closing it back in, right? Now, what we do so, first of all, is we'll deal with the bottom half of this circle. Now, what we're doing is the tree, you read the question, of course, which is always the first thing you do. The 3D graphic below shows a glass jar and a label which is to be wrapped around it. The drawing on the right shows the plan and elevation of the label and the cylindrical portion of the glass jar. Complete the elevation showing the label in the wrapped position. So, here's our label in its open position there in the red. We're going to start to rotate it around here. Okay? Now, what we'll do is we'll... Um, Divide up our circle here, 30. So now we have the distance. So we get our compass. Right, so that's the first distance. Second, third, fourth. So we're landing on four, right, exactly. Obviously, the way they set it up on purpose. It'll be the same on the other side then. One, two, three, four. Right? Now, again, we mark them, right? So we'll say one is here, right? Um, one in, in blue on the left, two, three, four, and five. Now, and then on the circle when it's rotated in, that'll be two, that'll be three, that'll be four, and we can throw in five there now. The same on the other side. So, to do the left hand side then, okay, four is on the outside there, so I know that four will be up here. What height will four be, right? Well. What you do in the way we've done it before is you take four up, that's the height of four, that height doesn't change, right? It's like the door handle on the door. As you swing the door open, the, door, the height, whatever height the handle is, won't change. It's the same here. As this red label swings around this, a height won't change. So this is the height of four here. So you bring it up and then you bring it in, right? And I know that four is the outside edge here because this is the horizontal diameter true. So that's four there. Now, 5 is going to be behind the object, isn't it? 1, 2, 3 will be here to start, but 5 will be behind it. So, what we do then is we take, um, we'll do 3 then. So the first thing to get 3 up here, you bring it straight up. As it happens, what will also be on that line? 3 and 5, right? Then you get their heights. So this is the height of 3. You take that in. That's where 3 is there. Then you get 2. So you take 2 straight up first of all. So that's the line 2 will be on when it's closed. Then you get the height of 2. Which will be there. And you bring that in there. That's the height of 2. And then... Um, the last one then, so that will come heavy down there, two, three, four, because it'll be on the near side, but then four to five will be, five is the last bit, no, so five, when you bring it up, will be here, so that's where five comes in, and five is in the same line as three, so that will be five there. Now, what happens at five? So when, when I do dotted here at the back, you worry about the front in a minute. Does it just stop there or does it go across? There's a little vertical bit, isn't it? So that would be vertical from 5 down to... Down 
down to this point here, which is directly under five at the back. Right? Now, um, and at the front, <coughs> um, now to get the point, this will come up heavy there, four, three, two, right? Now, where does it actually hit the top surface? How do I calculate it? Well, first, we get this point, right? Now, I'm going to put it in red because, and I'll call it a P for the point, right? To get where P comes, because this point here, right, it's a little bit, it's vertical. It's a little bit away from the center, but when we rotate it, it will move towards the center a bit. So first of all, you have to get it down here where, when it's not rotated. So you bring P straight down to this. Right? So this is P here when it's not rotated. We have the height of P again, not like the height of a door handle as the door swings open, it won't change. We have the height of P. Well, what we need have now is we have the distance from 1 to P here. So you get your compass, you open it to P, and you rotate it back up. And it's just, just to the right, fractionally to the right of 2. So when you come back up, you're coming up only a fraction of a millimetre to the right of 2. And that's the front bit then there. And then it's dotted. Now, that'll be dotted into the centre. Now, in an exam, when you're under pressure to, to obviously, to move through questions quickly, what would be the simplest way to get that part of it on this side? In this line here, you'd use axis symmetry, right? Um, but because we're practicing this, I want to do it again, the same method, right? So we're saying we've one here in green, two, three, four, five. You can't really notice much of a difference between the colours, but two then be here, two, three, four, and five. So we get the heights from these by bringing them up to where they are on the curved surface, right? Or on, on this edge, rather, of the, of the red label. The height won't change. As it moves around, it won't change. So when we have the height, we then have to calculate how far in it moves. And this is how far in it moves. So again, we'll start with one, right? Or I beg your pardon, we'll start with... We'll, uh, actually, we'll do the opposite this way. Instead of starting and going up, we'll start at the top point. So first of all, I want to say, where is this point, right? And we're going to name, we're going to rename P, P1, right? And now we're going to, on this side, have P2, right? So first of all, we calculate where P2 is down here, right? And it's straight down. Right, and again, slightly inside too, which would make sense there. So that's P2. So now that I have the height of it, as the red label is wrapped around it, how far in does it move? Because I know it has to move in a bit because it's not, if it was on the circle here, then it wouldn't. But the fact that it's away, it will fractionally move in. So you get your distance from uh, 1 to P, and rotate it up there, and you find P2 here on the edge of the rounds or the edges in there. So that's P2, and I should have said that that's P1 there as well, and it's rotated up. Stick a little arrow on it there to show you. So P2 comes straight up then. <coughs> Excuse me. Just inside P2 there, and that's where it'll start. Right? Now that will go to... Um, 2 will be the first point. So I bring 2 in. Right, that's where it is, but how high is 2? So this is the line you take your heights off. So you come from two here, straight up to the edge, and then bring it, bring it in where it cuts that edge. And this is green, of course, so that'll be two here. Right, green two. Right. Then we get three. So two lines have to go up. The first, where three is when it's curved in, that's where it'll be. The second, how to get the height of it, and you take the height of it off of the the label here. So you go up, that's where 3 will be here, and you take 3 in, and you get your green, and that's green 3 then. Then 4 is out on the edge again, right? So look, I didn't even take it up the other side, but I know when it's out on the edge there, that's going to be here, same here when it's out on the right hand side edge, it'll be on that line. So 4 goes straight up to get the height of it. We bring it in to the edge, right? That's four there. 
right? And that that can go heavier than then. And then because the next part of it goes behind, as we see this rectangle of the cylinder, we're seeing all what's below the pencil there. So we're seeing one, two, three, four, this side, and one, two, three, four, that side. And then the two fives, they're inside this at the back, so they curve in behind it. So that's why five is a bit in here. And five, first of all, it's on the same line as three, right? Because 30 degrees that way, 30 degrees that way from a horizontal line. And then to get the height of it, <coughs> well, we have the height of it here, of course, so I'll bring that in there. And that's five there. And we can <coughs> dot that one there then. Because it's in detail. And then again look. So that's this line here curved around. Right? But when it gets to that point it drops for that distance. So dot it will drop for that distance. Now, is there a dotted line between them? Like the label falls around to there and there. So is there any line there at the back? No, there's not. I think I might have marked a, a dotted earlier for some reason. I don't know if there or not. But there isn't a dotted line there because it's simple. This part of the label goes around as far as there. This part of the label goes around as far as there. And that's that. 